Hey everybody, welcome back to Thumb FPV. Uh, today we have another uh, part of the build video for this Arm Time remote build. Uh, today we are going to go over how to put the frame together exactly. So to start off with this, what you're going to want here is your left brace, your right brace, your cam saver, your front standoff, your M3 by 8 screws, your HD cam plate, your HD cam foam, and your M3 by 4 screws. So what you want to do when you're holding this, you're going to have this little radius here. You're going to want that on the outside. So I have that laid down like that. You can also see like the groove marks right here. Those should be on the inside. I have that mirrored up. So to do this easy, start off by putting the screw in, followed by your cam saver. It sits in there nice and neat. Go ahead and screw down your first your uh, standoff bracket. And you'll see that fits nice and snug right inside that machined line right there. So again, we're gonna mirror this, this side, flip this over, repeat the process, get that lined up, start the screw, now what I like to do for things like this is I like to lay them down on the table, get a better uh, perpendicular fit of sorts, if you will. Now this is not going to be perfect by any means, but it's a good start. Some minor adjustments may be needed later, but for right now we have an overall idea of what we're doing. Also, we can re-loosen this in a minute after we put on the top cam plate So I have a top cam plate here. This will also help to keep this perpendicular square, whatever you wanna call it, upon building this. Also, what you're gonna to wanna to do is put these on lightly, and then we're gonna go ahead, loosen down the side bolts afterwards firmly tighten these ones down and then re-tighten the bolts on the side to ensure that the fit is secure and proper. Everything should be perfectly flat and even. You could also do this the other way around, but trying to mess around with everything, getting your fingers inside may be a bit of a pain in the butt if you don't have the smallest fingers. So I got that slightly snug down there. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this just a bit. And loosen this. Now there will be enough play to tighten these down securely and make them perfectly flat. And then re-tighten the bolts on the side and everything should be right on point. Now your camera holder is perfectly square. Next thing we're gonna do is attach the foam plate. So what I like to do for this point in time is to clean any surfaces that may be getting any sort of foam, sticker, decal, whatever, with rubbing alcohol. I do this every time and I swear by it, other people have other things that they like to use and that's fine if you have something different as long as it works I stick with what I know because I have literally never had any of my battery pads or anything like that ever come off doing this so make sure it's fully coated nice and clean you can use soap and water if you want but you may leave a residue which may result in film buildup on 
the surface, which may lead to your foam pad, decals, stickers, whatever coming off. I don't recommend it, but to each their own. If that's what you wanna do, go ahead. As you can see, that dries nice and clean, basically by itself. I did give it a little help because I had saturated it, but that is done. So holding this by the side, I'm actually gonna cheat on this. We're gonna get rid of the tabs first. Poke these out, because we do not need them. It'll also help us line up the top with the holes a lot better. Peel this back. Get this positioned accordingly. Put it into place securely. Give it a nice firm press. Cover all edges. And that is done. This is the camera holder completed right here. So the next step, we're going to move on to the body itself, and we'll go from there. Okay, so the next step is the antenna mount, and there are two different ways of doing this. If you just want to use your regular uh, VTX that you have, you can go ahead and you can use this. You can run your coaxial through there. Uh, put these grommets on either side of it. Um, and then if you happen to have a lock washer, you'd put that with the teeth facing in to give it a nice solid fit and then it'll be nice and secure. But they did not provide that with this, your VTX and or your antenna for your VTX may come with that. This however does not. It comes with these for this option. This also right here, this little rubber grommet will go in the center of that. That is not what I'm going to do. I did get the TBS Black Sheep BTX with this. So what we are going to do is simply hook up the SMA connector to the bracket here and then install the antenna. So for this, we're going to need two of our M3 by four screws tiny little babies over here, grab these out, these will be your little short guys, the rest of the hardware there, we're going to need to open our package. There are a lot of different VTXs. Um, your tanks are good. Uh, there are a couple other ones. I really, honestly, 100% like to stick with the TBS. I've had the AKK, the hundred or the fifty-dollar one that you can get from Race Day Quads. That's the thousand milliwatt. That's nice if you like that. Um, it does have very good range on it, but these are solid overall. You can't go wrong with them. So what you're gonna wanna do is take your connector here, line it up there, and then simply run your screws through the connectors and the plate back into your SMA adapter, like so. This is a really nice fit, I like it. It's clean, it's very smooth, looks nice. It's not messy. Give those a good snug tight down there. This is the antenna that comes with it. This is the right hand channel patch Pagoda 2 designed by Martin Barrett. This will simply just screw on the outside here like so. Nice and secure. Very nice and secure. I like I like that. That's that's nice how that fits right there. And that is that for the antenna adapter. We're gonna set that up to the side and now we're gonna move on to the top plate. Okay, this step is the top plate. Not a whole lot to it. We're going to need our lipo plate, lipo plate foam. We will need two three by six millimeter screws. We will need our sunk nuts and we are also going to need our BTX antenna holder here. So, I'm gonna start off 
I do believe that there should be enough. Maybe not. Let me try this over. All right, clean the plate first. Make sure you get all any form of debris film off of this. Again, we want this pad to last as long as possible. I wish they would have made them rubber instead of foam. I am not familiar exactly with using the foam pads. Maybe they work. I don't know. I, I know I do overall like the grip from the rubber pads though. They are very nice. I'm just going to slightly take off the excess here. Wipe it down. Again, the majority of it will just evaporate itself. So we got a good amount of film off of it there. Let that sit. While that's drying, we just take and press out foam pad cutouts here that we don't need. Get this oriented properly. That's not right. That should be it right there. Fits up nice. So we're just gonna take this, peel this off. Oops, I missed a couple. There I go poking holes and stuff that's not supposed to have holes in it. And that's kind of an example right there about what I don't like about the foam. Anyway, don't do that. Try to do this as careful as possible. Line it up. Set it down like so. There's going to be a small area around the outside of both of these. I did that as close as I could for as fast as I did it. I think it looks pretty clean. So there's that. The next step for this is to take and put our nuts on. So I'm actually going to do this one at a time. The nuts are supposed to fit in the bottom of here. They are not to go in the carbon fiber. They also do not want to stay in there. So I'm gonna do these one at a time. Simply hold it. Add the screw. Nice little grip there. You can feel it tightening up on my finger. So that's in. Going to add the other one. Repeat process. And I'm just going to take them down snug. I'm not going to tighten them all the way down. I don't want to damage the piece of plastic underneath of it. Also, I feel like I'm going to have to take this off at a later point in time, so I'm just going to secure them like so. This is the top plate completed here. So that is the top plate completed. Now we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so we have everything here ready to get the bottom plate put together. What we're going to need for this is our titanium anchors, our tail posts, our foam landing pads, we're going to need four M3 by 16 screws, we're going to need our nylon nuts, nylon spacers, and our M3 by 8 screws. So I'm going to start with the tail posts on this, and these are going to go like this. 
you're going to want the angle going towards the top. Set them up nice and neat there. Run your screw through the bottom. Again, I do not tighten anything all the way down until the drone is fully assembled. I just give it a nice little snug fit. That way there is some give and some play in case you have to hook something else up later. That was my battery charger in the background. I have batteries charged for tomorrow. So again, with the tail post here, nice and snug. Like so I'm going to move on to the titanium anchors. These are going to go the opposite way. I'm going to slide on like this. Screw through the bottom here. Add the second one. I like how they're notched out so they fit up just right. Like so. Now I'm going to use the M3 by 16s. This is going to be, if I remember correctly, this is a 30 by 30. So we're going to use the outside holes. If you have a 20 by 20 stack, you can put that in the middle there. I'm just going to start by running these on. Snug them down. One. Oops. Add our third one. On to number four. Set them there. We're going to go ahead and add the nut on top of the spacer just for later. That way these are saved and out of the way. We're not going to lose them. That way when it comes time to install the flight controller, we know where they're at. So those are on there, we have the spacers, and the nuts. That part's done. <clears throat> so the next thing that they want us to do is put the foam pads on. Honestly, I don't really care for these things at all. Um, I'm gonna put them on just for the sake of the build of the frame if they come off I am NOT going to put them back on I can assure you that I have tried using them on different builds and they don't last you have them to land in the grass and it's wet they get all soggy come undone you land on the concrete too many times and they start fraying still come undone so it's just basically a vicious cycle with these things. I'm gonna create a little space here outside of where the motor mounts are, like so. Let that dry on its own. Get these ready, start peeling the pads back. This one seemed to be dry first, so I'm gonna go ahead here and just back it off probably 
just under an inch. Repeat the process over here. Like so, put that on, flip it around. Boom. One more. And that's done. Looks nice, neat, clean, evenly spaced. And your carbon fiber is not scratching on anything. Again, these things break, they get scratched, whatever. I guess try to protect them if you can. I don't, for one, care for them particularly though. So, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna add our little camera holder here. But I am actually going to go first with putting on VTX adapter which secures here to the back that gets put on with two of the M4 screws these little short stubby guys here I've been waiting to do this build for a while. Finally got around to it. I really like the Armaton frames. They're unique, they're solid. They have a great warranty with them and everything. I've just been having trouble lately even having time to fly, let alone build. Building can be very tedious, very time consuming. Um, you're trying to just piece stuff together. The DIY kits are nice because they have everything for you already and everything matches up as far as your bolts, your amps and everything like that. So that's always nice, but sometimes it's just a pain. So we have the VTX on. I'm going to go ahead at the top plate. Looks very nice. This is going to be put on with the M6 screws. These guys here. I'll grab four of those. Just ever so lightly drop them in the place. Or on the table. Your new in the quads or you have a couple extra dollars to spend and you want to get something good you want to get something solid you want a quality product I do recommend that you go with an Armaton build it is as of right now the only drone frame company that has lifetime warranty on the frames and that is really nice especially if you're into flying bandos or parks something like that you like to rip, you're flying 6S, you're flying 4S, you're going really fast, there's a lot of obstacles, whatever. You break your frame, they will fix it for you, which is really nice. So, we have that. Next thing we're going to do, we need six more of our M6 screws. and we're going to put on the camera holder. And there's a reason why this radius is to the outside and that is so you can easily access putting the screws on. Now I'm going to do this 
certain way. I'm going to line up the top two on either side. One and two, that way it's basically perpendicular. Everything will be square. And I'm gonna show you a really cool feature about this in a minute. So we have the first two on. Now the other holes are already lined up. You just gotta get them into place. It is kind of on an angle. You can do it without cross threading them. I highly recommend it. It is kind of hard to start them off with the screwdriver after you have the first two on there. Those ones are the easiest to get. But I'm gonna go ahead, put these on. Or at least try to. Okay, so we have the video. This is how you put the frame together. Again, I have already fully assembled this quad. Um, really nice build but we're gonna go over it step by step all the way from A until Z so this is my newbie build for beginners try to help people out um, again I have my uh, wife here that's uh, new to this doesn't know too much about it so uh, she's gonna be my assistant in this and uh, if she has any questions she's gonna ask so do you have any questions about this part of the build so far so far, the only question I have is what's the SMA adapter? SMA adapter is a sub miniature version A that is the type of the connection for the VTX running between the antenna and the lead wire to the VTX itself. There's MMCX, there's like a UFRL, there's a couple of them. Um, that's just the one that they use in this. So that's what that is. Why is this part little? camera holder yeah the camera holder on this is metal is not completely uh, it's not one piece but this is made out of titanium uh, titanium is not made to bend it is made for the rigidity rigidity of it so it is highly impact resistant that way if you crash into something and you happen to hit this it will stay true to form if anything does happen to it it will break instead of bend I do not think that the back pieces on this, I'm pretty sure they're not titanium. They look like anodized aluminum. They also don't feel the same. Um, the bottom part on this overall, as far as being one piece, um, several factors can come into play with that. Noise elimination, um, having it all one piece can also keep everything nice and locked in place. Uh, there is a lifetime warranty on it, so if something does happen to it, it's replaced for free by Armaton. Uh, the downside is to that, that you have to send it in and wait to get another one or order another one, have a backup one, and then rebuild your drone and wait for your other piece to come back. Whereas some of the other ones, you can just have separate arms on standby, and then you can just swap them out and then send the other ones in. Mm -hmm. So, that's that. Anything else? No? Okay, okay. So that's it for this part of the video. Again, this is the frame build for the Armaton Marmot. I uh, hope you guys like this and we'll keep this series going. Stay tuned, we'll have another video up soon. Thanks.